This episode of In an Instant is powered by Wasabi. Get 15% off camera batteries with promo code INSTANT. Well, hello there, folks. This is your captain speaking. We sure do hope you enjoy this journey from New York to Las Vegas on Instant Airlines. Welcome to In an Instant. My name is Ben, and this week we are Viving Las Vegas with a new miniseries here on the channel called Are You Feeling Lucky? In this miniseries, we're gonna be diving into the doldrums of the film fridge, shooting expired film that has been waiting years to be exposed to light. Will we get good results? What kind of hand will we be dealt? That's what this series is all about. In this installment, we are shooting with a wide range of wonky expired film, including an Elvis disposable camera. How appropriate, we're in Vegas. We're shooting with a lovely pair of Portra 160 and Fuji NPS film. So we'll see how those things age together. And finally, a bit of lovely Polaroid 669 pack film of unknown date. It has just been inside this camera. So let's spin the wheel, test our luck, and see what we get. Roll it. The kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. We're getting fleeced up and down the strip. That's what it's all about, baby. Vegas. <laughs> oh, sh so the very first camera we are shooting today, it is very apropos. It is the Elvis Love Me Tender Dream Camera. This is a disposable camera. The film inside expired in 2008. I have so many questions about this product. Um, I love that it exists. Uh, essentially, it, it pre-exposes Elvis onto your frames. So shots four to one have Western Elvis. Uh, you know, we're getting in studio, we're having crooning Elvis. And I don't quite understand how this works. I think I'll only fully get it once uh, I take it apart. It's clearly a Kodak disposable camera that just has this like box on it. Also interesting is that this has a custom viewfinder. Um, the viewfinder is more narrow when you're looking through it. So the idea is you're centering your subject every single time and it will place it in the like vignette Elvis is next to. Very curious also how this film will hold up. Expired in 2008. It's a disposable camera, so the film was not very high quality to begin with, consumer film, obviously. Um, so I'm guessing the results are gonna be kind of shitty, but uh, it's freaking Elvis Love Me Tender Dream Camera. It's, it's a dream come true for me, old Benny Bags. Here we are, Elvis's star on the Vegas Strip. Um, didn't know this was a thing. We're kind of on the hunt for like Elvis themed things because we've got this camera, so let's shoot it. Maybe not the most dynamic shot, but I think it'll tell a story. There we go. I'm gonna grab my Dasani. Get the heck out of here. So, as we evaluate these Elvis dream camera results, there's a bit of a twist afoot. The initial question is, are we feeling lucky? And we are. The results are shockingly good considering the age of the film inside. But speaking of the film inside, it turned out this was a devil in disguise. I was met with a huge surprise when I brought this to the lab. When pulled out of its cardboard casing, I discovered the camera was haphazardly taped together, adding a layer of mystery. Not only was this a Kodak disposable, it was a Kodak disposable with a roll of Agfa Vista 400 inside. Suspicious minds are rewarded. This is a rare discontinued film that was once a fan favorite. Later in its run, the film was a rebranded Fuji Superior 400, so we were ultimately shooting with a solid film. It's now to my understanding that there must have existed a company whose role was to pre-expose images like Elvis or for other novelty disposables, and their film of choice happened to be Agfa Vista 400. They'd then break open the Kodak disposable cameras, toss away what was in there, and then tape the camera back together with stunningly poor attention to detail. The lens housing was also modified at some juncture so that only half the frame would be exposed, leaving the other half to Elvis Presley. They probably didn't think any film rats would be breaking into these, but we had to scope it out. Onward we went, and luck struck again when we finally got to meet an honest to gosh Elvis impersonator. We went up and down the strip searching, and we found him, <laughs> where else? At the iconic Welcome to Las Vegas sign. A wonderful conclusion to the final frames from the Elvis Dream Camp. We're trying to find a picture of you with this Elvis camera. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'll take it of you. All right. <laughs> okay. Three, two, one. A little bit closer. A little bit closer to you. 
We've been looking for an Elvis everywhere. Well, you got an Elvis right now. Yeah. yeah. And this is a real thing, this man. It's a dream come true. There's one for the money, two for the show. We go riding on coke and coke, but don't you step on my blue suede shoe. Well, you can do anything by getting up on my blue suede shoe, blue, blue. Las Vegas. Fun fact, the first time I ever got electrocuted was when I was uh, probably 10 years old, messing around with a Kodak disposable camera, taking it apart, being a degenerate, and I touched the live battery, and I was like <laughs> And I ran to my mom and I was like, I think I'm like different now. So for all you literary fanatics out there, part of the dramatic irony of this series is that I've shot the expired film, you as a viewer have seen the results. I'm here right now having no idea essentially whether or not the camera, that all this camera even works, what the portrait looks like, etc. But that's the magic of instant film and that's why there's always gonna be instant film involved in these series. So that in the moment we can experience what the results are we're getting with this thing. So just to reiterate, this is Polaroid 669 pack film that's been sitting in a Polaroid Automatic 100 LAN camera, which was one of the original Polaroid pack film cameras. Uh, it's just been sitting in here for, I think, probably two plus years. I have absolutely no idea what the results are gonna be like. Uh, we did just take a shot at the Paris Las Vegas of their simulated Eiffel Tower. Uh, the spread looks good, I think. Um, so let's peel it and see what our first result looks like. Whoa. Very gnarly, but pretty sick, in my opinion. Uh, for super old 669, that's not so bad. I wanna see if there is one moment where someone will leave the frame. I am not optimistic. I may have to just take this picture with some strangers I don't know, smiling under the Welcome to Las Vegas sign. There he is. A guy I don't know, in a precious pack film shot. Third to last shot. Some funky spread there. Whoa! Our chemical spreads are getting worse and worse, and I think it adds to this shot. It's hard to take any image of this sign that's not been taken or done a billion times, so when you get something that's like kind of one of a kind like this, that's kind of interesting to me at least. It's better than just the plain old photo I took with my Hassie, but we'll cherish this memory. Three. Is that a Polaroid? Yes. All right, most diehard Polaroid fans know you're not supposed to shake it, shake, shake it, shake it, shake, shake it, shake it like a Polaroid picture because Polaroid Integral film is not wet when it comes out. That's literally the point of the film. However, today we get the pleasure of shaking it like a Polaroid picture because this is a wet print. This is Polaroid pack film, so it is not dry when you peel it. So we get the pleasure, and it even has a little divot where I can hold my thumb. Not intentional, but it is what it is. Also, a little note um, on when this was made. It does say Polaroid.com on the back. So this may be from around 03, actually. Um, and maybe we should go to that website and see if we can buy some more. What do you think? What do you think, Polaroid? You wanna make some more? You wanna make some more of this goddamn film? You ain't none but a hound dog. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and three, two, one. The cop coming! <laughs> well, we just ran into Black Buddy Rich, and it was a very contrasty lighting situation, so I'm not super confident that the shot will come out. But let's see how the automatic exposure did. Yeah, pretty dark, but kind of moody and has like its own vibe to it. Maybe captures his essence. His, his essence is not capturable. Yep. Yep. We have now arrived in Death Valley National Park. We're done with Vegas. We wanted to come out into the wild. How many national parks can we rack up on in an instant? Well, here's another one. This place is absolutely f***ing sick. The landscape is out of control, and it's another great location to be shooting expired film. Now we're shooting expired 120 film. Now we're shooting actually nice photos. Um, on the Hasselblad 500CM, it's kind of an exciting opportunity to no longer be shooting on a disposable camera for me personally. And in this camera, we're gonna be shooting Portra 160VC and Fujifilm's equivalent film 
uh, Fuji 160 NPS. So something that's interesting to note about the slower speed 120 films and all slower speed films in general is that slower speed films don't degrade as quickly because the chemical coating is denser. Um, so I think there's a better chance that these photos will actually come out um, a little bit cleaner and maybe with less color shifts and less grain than the other stuff we shot. I mean, we're shooting consumer film on a disposable camera, so I think no matter what, our results are gonna be a little bit better. The Portrait 160 VC expired in 2007. I got it at a trade show in Boston. Uh, bought it from a friendly old man. Don't know how he stored it. Storage is a very critical component of how well expired film will age. So that's one of our baselines. We got the 2007 film. The Fuji MPS expired in 1999, so it's quite a bit older. And so I'm curious to see how these films compare to one another. Uh, the NPS made by Fuji is essentially Fuji's equivalent film of Portra. Fuji would typically take, you know, the base stock that Kodak was offering and then create an offering of their own. So that's what the MPS is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they age. It'll be interesting to see how they look against each other um, as film stocks. And I'm shooting a lot of fresh Portra on this trip as well. So um, I'm going to be throwing up some comparisons. A lot of Portra 400, um, not quite a one-to-one -to, -one to Portra 160 VC, but I think it'll have to do. We woke up quite early this morning, crack of dawn, 4 a.m., wanted to shoot some gas station photos and there was only one piece of infrastructure in the entire region and that's the motel we were staying at, Panamint Springs. It was it was a gorgeous landscape, gorgeous light. Uh, really hope that the, the 160 VC worked because that's what I was shooting. I've only got a few shots of that left and then I'm gonna move on to the NPS. And then the rest of the day I'm probably just gonna let it fly with the fresh stuff. But uh, yeah, Death Valley, it's pretty sick. So let's talk a little bit about this Portra 160 VC and the Fuji NPS. First of all, Portra 160 VC is one of the predecessors to the Portra 160 currently sold by Kodak. Portra once coexisted as NC and VC, NC meaning natural color and VC meaning vivid color. Both were discontinued in around 2013, so it was freaking sweet to be able to shoot some of it. Overall, I think the film held up very well. Despite the film base shifting to a much greener hue, Portra typically has an orange mask when fresh. I was still able to pull decent scans out of the roll, and I'd say on the scale of two of spades to ace of spades, with the ace of spades being the luckiest, we're at about a jack of diamonds here. With the Fuji NPS, we were dealing with a much older expiry date, 1999. You can see the shift in the color mask compared to an NPS roll that was 10 years fresher. This roll resulted in some heinous color shifts on auto settings, but with some massaging, I could work the film back toward a reasonable base color. It was still quite hard to match shots or achieve a consistent look from the roll. Uh, I shot both rolls at ASA 80, since expired film loses density and thus sensitivity over time. And I think that was pretty much fine. These films were flexible to begin with, so wasn't really sweating it, unlike a Death Valley where I was uh, increasingly sweating it, it got really hot. The motel we were staying at was a base camp for Top Gun Maverick, and Tom Cruise is a frequent visitor. Two days before we arrived, Cruise was there and signed a hat, which he pinned to the wall, and it just had me thinking, I wish Tom Cruise would pin a hat to my chest. This is absolutely outrageous. I think coming into Death Valley, we were thinking this place is gonna be kind of like a Death Valley, but uh, it turned out to be alive with an incredible variety of sights and sounds and lack of sounds. Very peaceful experience. Me and Nat got to just bomb around shooting expired film. <sighs> a little better than that. Thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and do something you can't take back to that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more. Reviews, shoots, breakdowns, and all things instant. Bye. Man, I've never been to Las Vegas, first of all. Love poker. Um, I just never made it out here, and I don't know what I was expecting, but it's very clean. Um, I haven't been attacked. And I've hardly been solicited. Um, so I feel pretty good about our experience so far. It's, it's definitely a walk in town. We're walking around, walking quite a lot because there's no way to even cross the street uh, because of the, the freaking I mean, obviously there's drunk people everywhere and uh, you don't want anyone to get clocked. Um, last night we, we, hit the, we hit the poker room at, uh, what was it called, the Golden Nugget. We got cleaned out, but uh, we're gonna be back for more tonight and uh, hopefully we get dealt better cards, you know what I mean? 
And hopefully we get dealt cards in this video with this expired film functioning properly. Wouldn't that be a treat?